Why was he so frightened all of a sudden? <gasps> Hello. Today we are playing Motherly. So this game was made for the Spooktober 3rd Annual Visual Novel Jam by DevTalk. Now, just as a warning, it does contain blood, disturbing images, mentions of child death, and sometimes bright colors are used, so if you're sensitive to any of that, this might not be the video for you. With all that said, let's get started. It's 10am. Sunlight shines through the curtains. I open my eyes and look to my side to find an empty spot where my husband once was. He must have woken up early and taken the kids to school, as usual. All that's left for me is to wake up and start my daily routine. Ugh. We really should get a new bed. This mattress is killing me. I say to no one but myself. Once you get used to being a stay-at-home wife, talking to yourself is a welcome habit. I stand by my dresser and pick out something to wear, giving a quick look in the mirror to make sure everything is in place. As the self-proclaimed best mom of the neighborhood, I had an image to keep up. <laughs> hmm, breakfast can wait. First, I need some fresh... I need to finish some chores. Where were they again? What were they again? Oh, let's see. So to learn to costume or cook for the book club meeting. Hmm. We're gonna go with sewing the costume. That's right, DeLorean wanted me to make his costume. He can't believe his school allowed him to take it home. They should be more cautious with kids. After searching all around his room, I managed to find it. Now to sit in a comfortable chair and get this over with. <laughs> get thread through the needle. Stitch. It doesn't take long for me to stitch it right back. Good as new. Ah, oh, that was fast. Hmm. There's still time before lunch. Should I do something else? I guess we're cooking. <laughs> they only arrive at 5 p.m., but I should have things ready beforehand. Never know when they might have a blackout or if Victor forgot to pay the water bill. <laughs> I'm distressing. <laughs> Digressing. Although I don't think I would ever be able to live down the embarrassment if something went wrong, the super mom having an awful evening would be the subject of gossip for days. Wow, it must be really boring. <laughs> Let me look at my grandma's recipe book. What should I choose for today? Zucchini muffins or blackberry cake? Zucchini bread is delicious if you've ever had it. Blackberry cake does sound good, but let's go with blackberry cake. A great option for a casual meeting. The main dish is literature discussion after all. Onto the oven they go. Into the oven they go. I should set a timer. Oh. oh. Who might that be? It takes me a few minutes to find my phone. For some reason, it was in between the sofa's cushions. Once I check it, there are two missed calls. Hmm, call the school, call the book club. Oh. Hmm. I'm more concerned with, with my kid, I think. Hello, Miss Evans? Hello. Could you come to school? Dorian has gotten himself into trouble again. Dorian. Can't you let this one pass? I'm busy at the moment. I'm afraid not. He was caught fighting some of his classmates during recess. I tried calling your husband, but there was no answer. Due to the severity of the offense, I don't want to discuss anything further on this phone call. I'll wait for you to come pick him up. Great. So Dorian is in trouble again. I observe the school and see my son standing at the entrance with the police with the principal by his side. Do 
story and why did you have to get in trouble again? As I mentioned on the phone earlier, he and his friends were sent into the detention for starting a fight against one of their classmates. We were lucky one of the staff members arrived just in time to stop them. Is this true? I didn't join them. Listen, we can't keep excusing his behavior. If it happens one more time, we will be required to take more severe measures. Especially considering this isn't the first time Dorian has done something like this. You don't have to worry. His dad and I will talk to him and resolve it. I hope that's true. I should get back to school and talk to the other students involved in this case. The principal leaves. Get in the car now. We have to pick up Aiden on our way home. I can't believe you embarrassed me like that. What am I supposed to tell all the other parents? That's what she's concerned about? Uh oh. Dorian remained silent and entered the car right after I did. Dorian silently sulked while we were on our way to get Aiden. I called to inform the teacher that Aiden would have to leave his class early. When I got there, he was waiting for me with a sad look on his face. Hey son, hop in. Okay. He entered the car as well. Buckle up. We should be home soon. What's with that sad look? Did it interrupt something? No, it's not that. Well, it looks like neither of them are talking. It wasn't a long trip from their school to our home, but with an overactive mind like mine, a thousand thoughts came rushing in. Why is it that I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd forgotten something? Do you have another kid? Oh, fuck the oven, right? We left the oven on. Shoot. Damn it, the oven. That's why I should never leave before double checking everything. God damn it. My foot slammed onto the gas pedal. We had to get there as soon as possible. Would the kitchen be on fire? What if I had nothing to serve at the book club? It was all my fault. Fuck the book club! As we arrived, I hopped out of the car. Stay here. Uh, Mommy? I ran to the door and opened it at once and... Whoa, careful. Hello, Victor. H honey! What? Is everything okay? I... I wasn't feeling so good, so I decided to work from home today. It's alright, I turned off the oven. <sighs> Before I could say anything else, the kids stepped in, worried looks on their faces. Please, not a word, just go to your rooms. Aww, my kids look miserable. They didn't look pleased, but they complied and headed upstairs. Is something wrong? No, it's fine, really. We can talk after dinner. I just didn't expect to see you so soon. Just order a pizza for you and the boys when the book club meeting starts. If you say so. Anyway, I'll be upstairs too. He didn't even kiss me before turning back, but I suppose I shouldn't be upset about it. If it weren't for him, I'd probably be forced to feed other book club members flavored ashes. The meeting was fast approaching, but I wanted to see how the boys were doing first. Mm. Freaks. I really need to talk to both of them. I'm a little worried about how Aiden was reacting when we picked him up. But Dorian probably feels terrible, but what if she says something? What if he just needs space? I don't want him to... I don't want him to feel like we don't believe him. Though. I don't know if she does, but... Hmm. This is tough. Hopefully they'll let me check on both of them. Aiden 
open first. I place my ear on the door before opening it. I hear Aiden playing with his teddy bear in the bathtub. In the bathtub? A teddy bear? Okay. Dorian is so mean to mother. We should give him a lesson. I say throw him to the sharks. No! I was actually thinking of drawing a funny face on him while he sleeps. We are savages, Mr. Hook. He just wants father's attention all to himself. <laughs> I don't care about that. Mother will always be by my side. I decide to open the door and interrupt his chat. Hey, darling. I see you, Mr. Hook, are disagreeing with something. We were just upset about Dorian. He should be nicer to you. I appreciate your concern, but it's just a phase. He will change soon. Is dad also having a phase? Oh. Hopefully it's the same as Dorian. I hope I don't get a phase like this. I didn't want his mother to be his best friend forever. I'll surely be, especially if you stay this cute and proper forever. You can grow up, though. It's not a big deal. I kiss Aiden's cheek before heading downstairs. I get to have kid. Darling, we're waiting. I'm coming. I open the door and there they were. Pleasure to meet you. Oh, damn. I didn't have time to buy something for her. I should notice Megan was disappointed, but it's too late to go back. Why don't you come inside? We can talk more then. She looks pissed. I noticed Janice seemed disappointed too. Maybe I should have been more thoughtful. What? We are all accommodating ourselves in the living room. After a few rounds of sweets and wine, it's time for Megan to properly introduce our new member. Tonight we are introducing a new member into our club. I must say, I never thought we'd have such a successful community when I first decided to open a book club for the mothers of Lilyvale Valley. <laughs> but it was my idea. It's fine. I wouldn't call her out since I'm still the one people look up to anyway. My right hand has been amazing ever since the beginning by giving me her support and allowing us to use her house for our bi-weekly meetings, and for that I am very grateful. Are you kidding me? Your right hand? What? We should have a drink to celebrate. Did you even bring, like, cake or anything? Oh yes, <laughs> sorry. I looked around, but it turned out the bottle I had brought was already empty. What? We didn't have more wine at home, so I wouldn't need to improvise. What else would a refined middle-aged woman be into? Oh my gosh. I'll be right back. This is... This isn't okay. I rush back in the kitchen, look for something in the fridge. Milk? Yogurt? Orange juice? Yeah, that would do. <sighs> what? What was that? I went there to check on both Aiden and Delorean were downstairs. Megan had blood on her hands. Delorean. I keep mispronouncing this kid's name. Um, um whose hand is that? Megan had blood on her hands. I don't I feel mm, I don't know. Do I need to be blaming my kids right now? First, I should find out what happened before I confront either of them. Maybe even ask one of the adults there what happened before just going out on my kids and I'm assuming that's one of their hands. Maybe it's the new members? Is it the nail polish and the complexion? Anyway. I don't want- I don't want Dorian to think that I'm like more pissed at him and that I feel like confronting him would make it seem like I'm blaming him. But then- Aiden did mention something about teaching his brother a lesson. That could be bad too. Ay, ay, ay. I'm not mad at 
at either of them. I don't want either of them to think they're in trouble, but if I, if I confront Dorian, then I really could be pushing him onto a corner. He's already upset about what happened. He hasn't really been talking. I don't know how she's gonna act, though. Is she gonna, like, blow up at them, or is it gonna be a gentle confrontation? Or she's like, hey, what happened? personalities that well. <sighs> I don't want to blame either of them. I don't know what happened. Uh, talk to the oldest, I guess. I'm not blaming you. I'm not... Okay, don't even look at me like that. It wasn't my fault, I swear. I believe you. Um, what happened then? Oh god, she's pissed. He, he jumped on his pillow and came surfing downstairs. I saw it. Oh, really? That's not like, safe, kid? No, shut up. That's not what happened. You told me to do it. Why would you listen to your kid brother? Boys, cut it out now. Are you hurt? Who's hurt? I had to bring him apart or else things would get worse. Poor Megan was still bleeding. I had to say something, but I was just incredibly embarrassed. Embarrassed? I'd be worried. It's alright. I'll take her to the hospital. It doesn't seem too bad. Just be careful next time, kids. <sighs> Megan, I'm so sorry. If there's anything I can do, just let me know. I, Whatever. Let's just get out of here. Janice took Megan into her car and the other guests took Q to leave as well. I was shocked. It had to be an accident, right? Just what was going on today? What a disaster. After they left, I had to clean up the mess. The boys did help me, but once again, they were silent. I felt like I was just there to fix up their messes. I shouldn't feel lonely. I have a beautiful family, and yet, yes, it must be a phase. Everything will go back to normal soon. We need to talk to them. Let me see if there's anything else going on. Yeah, okay. We're all done here. Can we go back to our rooms now? You look happier, at least. Oh, sure, sure. Sorry, Mommy. Just leave me in peace, and don't forget to brush your teeth. Both headed upstairs after throwing away the trash. I also went back to my room. Victor? Oh, hey, sweetie. How was the meeting? Did you not hear anything? Didn't you hear the commotion? Of course not. It went horribly. Megan had to be taken to the hospital to get stitches in her hand. Oh, really? Damn. I hope she's okay. What were you doing? You didn't hear the guy- His son is so cold and lifeless. What happened to my husband? He wasn't like that when I married him. What are you doing anyway? What were you doing anyway? Work. Maybe you had headphones on. Uh, okay. Do you want to talk about it? So, I had a rough day. I'll just hit the sack now. Good night. Are you okay, dude? He slowly made his way to bed. I know he must be, have been extremely exhausted from work, but he never told me why he wasn't feeling so good. Soon he was out like a light. What was wrong with him today? Um... I don't know. I decided to sleep as well. Hopefully things will get better tomorrow. There's always hope for tomorrow. Maybe you should take a break from the book club. Uh, where could this be coming from? Maybe? Check on Aiden. How old is he? I was holding a baby's hand. Not a baby. No, it was my son, Aiden. It has been a long time since he was that small, but still I could recognize that little face anywhere. I feel so bad for bringing him here. I told you to stay home with him. I can be here for Dorian. It's not that. I I have to be close to them and protect them. You'll be the one who gets sick if you don't take a break. I will once everything is perfect. Perfect. It's impossible.
The baby starts to cry, and I try to hush him to sleep until the room starts to go dark. I can't see what's in my hands anymore, and when I look up, there's a white figure in front of me. <laughs> you would never leave me alone, right, Mom? I clench my heart tight. Why did it feel so real? Are they really okay? I have to check on them. Check on both of your kids? I rush to their room. They have one room? Oh. To find them safe and sound asleep. Thankfully, it really was a dream, but it didn't do good towards my anxiety. I should drink a glass of water and calm down. It was just a nightmare. <sighs> As embarrassing as it was, maybe I should call my therapist again. No, I'm just stressed. No, call your therapist. I go downstairs and enter the kitchen, pouring myself a glass of water. I take a few deep breaths. Interlaced with sips. Oh, what the fuck? That's when I saw it. The fuck is that? Mmm. I couldn't see what it was, but its glowing eyes were staring at me. A sense of dread came over me, but all I could do was freeze in place, waiting for it to go away. Please don't. What the fuck? After what felt like hours, the shadow walked away and I ran upstairs. I entered my room, closed the door, and then began to cry. Hmm. Uh, is that you? I- God, I need my own. Yes? <laughs> Are you okay? I think I had a nightmare. That's what it was, right? Just a nightmare? Oh, honey, come here. Are you having nightmares again? Why didn't you say something sooner? I went back to bed and Victor held me in his arms. It was the first time this week he showed some affection towards me. I guess my concerns were pure paranoia again. Try to get some rest, okay? Try not to think about it. I closed my eyes and rested my head on my pillow, slowly falling asleep to the sound of my husband's voice. When morning came, I opened my eyes and reached for Victor, but he was already getting ready for work. Are you leaving already? today, so please take the kids to school. Also, I think Janice from the book club called you to meet up today. You should call her back. Mm. Janice, right. Victor was quiet again, as if what happened last night never happened, maybe even more distant than before, and for some reason he kept rubbing, his rubbing the back of his neck. Is this stress, or is he hurt? Did you hurt your neck yesterday? Let me see. Did I hurt your neck? No, I'm good. Just a little stiff. Victor, I... I'm going. He opens the door and leaves, not looking back. Mommy! Oh, what is this time? I get up and exit the room, following the voice towards the kitchen. It was Aiden. Why did dad leave? I thought he was going to work from home again. Not today, but on the bright side I get to take you to school, so you get to spend more time with me. Yay! I'll tell Dorian about it. He'll be so jealous, hee <laughs> hee. Come on now, be good to your brother. Is Dorian awake? He didn't want to come downstairs, is he okay? Well, more pancakes for you, then. No, my pancakes are yours. You've been so tired lately, you need to eat so you can go stronger. Oh, this kid's sweet. And that's not good when mother's tired. She needs to be healthy, harumph. Alright, I'll take more care of myself, but you do know I can't grow taller than what I already am, right? Adults don't grow, <laughs> What? But, I'm doing better today. I'll even go out today with a friend while you're at school. 
That sounds fun. I wish I could have more friends to play with. You know what? I'll I'll take you with me. It would be nice if you get out for a change. Take him out of school? What? No. And after that nightmare, I just wanted to be close to him. I don't feel like it's safe to leave him alone just yet. Just don't tell your dad about... Tell your dad that I let you skip school today. Yay! I'll be a good boy and wait for you then. I'll also grab Dorian. He cheerfully went upstairs to drag his brother to the kitchen. I've never seen a kid like that. Always so happy to be with his mom. Ugh. I feel a sharp pain in my neck. Was, the, was it the mattress again, or... My neck is hurting too. Those eyes. They were still in my mind. Yeah, they happened in this kitchen, right? Was someone really there last night? Mommy! Stop calling me like that, dude. I'm on my way. We made our way to the car. The boards were quiet. I felt like I was talking to myself in the head. In my head. This route was slowly grinding me down to a pace, but it felt like it was impossible to stop. Routine. God, I can't read. Have a fun day with Aiden today. When he said that, I came back to reality, finally realizing that we had just arrived at school. <laughs> just stay away from trouble. I love you, okay? He nodded and then left. After that, I turned the wheel and drove us straight to our meeting point. Aiden seemed to be way more excited than me. Did you know Janice and the principal adopted a kid this year? Oh, where did you hear that? Dorian told me this morning. She's my age. Maybe we can be friends. This sounds fun. Let's see if the odds are on our side. Wait, wait, wait. It really would be nice if Aiden were to meet a new friend. Perhaps I'd even feel better knowing that he had someone else to count on. Won't they know that he's skipping school then? Okay. I decided to tell Janice to text Janice and tell her that it would be possible for her to bring her daughter to the meeting. Hmm. Hey, look out! I shouldn't text while driving. Thankfully, the text was sent and the car was intact. Why were you driving while texting? You have a kid in there! Mommy, eyes on the road, please. Give me your cell phone right now. No peeking while driving. Okay, okay, you're right. I handed him my phone, not wanting to set a bad example. You already set a bad example. We stop by the cafe, and the first thing we see is Janice and her daughter right at the entrance waving at us. How did they get there so fast? Maybe they live close by? Hey, I see you brought a little gremlin with you. Don't call my kid a gremlin. And Captain Hook. He proudly showed his favorite toy to her. <laughs> He's so cute. I didn't know we could bring toys with us. And who is your little princess? It's Evelyn. Aiden likes Evelyn. Hello, Aiden. Can I play with your teddy bear? Is it Aiden or Aiden? Alright, kids. You can play together at the park while I talk to... I still don't know how to pronounce your name. <laughs> Go have fun. They didn't think twice before running into the park. I'm not going to supervise him? It was right outside the cafe, so I still had a good view of him. God, we couldn't get away with that. Funnily enough, they decided to sit and talk. When Dorian was young, all he wanted to do was play. Well, it seemed like Aiden was talking through his teddy bear, and somehow Evelyn seemed to understand his every word. They seem to hit it off well. Indeed, Aiden sometimes seems too mature compared to other kids his age, so I'm glad he's having a nice time. But why did you call me here today? Is it about Megan? No, no, Megan is fine. Don't worry about her. I asked you here because I wanted your advice. On what? See, my wife and I adopted Evelyn a couple months ago. 
but being a mother is so difficult and everyone in the neighborhood knows when it comes to being a mother, you're the best there is. No, I'm not. I'm unstable, honey. I work at home, so I'm able to keep an eye out for her. But even so, it feels like I just haven't gotten that big connection. Don't worry about not giving off the best first impression at that dinner to Megan. Between you and me, your kids are way more well-behaved than hers, especially your, that little angel, Aiden. If anyone can help me understand how kids work, it must be you. You sure about that? Yeah. Thankful you feel that close to me. Oh, I'm not that impressive. I know the boys must look like troublemakers sometimes, but they have good hearts. It's just that Dorian has made some bad friends this year. I guess there must, there just isn't a way to completely protect them from bad influences and maybe not, I don't know. Unfortunately not, but we try to give them advice and be there for them if they, if things take a bad turn. Like a safe harbor, I would say. It was odd to be sharing these thoughts with someone who understood. We had a book club meeting every so often, so now I see that we never really talked about anything other than books. It was nice just to talk to someone normally without having to keep up my image. I see. I want to be that for Evelyn as well. Would you say it's natural, natural or something you learn with time? Definitely something you learn. Definitely something you learn. <laughs> as much as we want to have children, we can't actually get the experience beforehand. Not even we have been a mother already. Aiden is very different from Dorian. What works with one of them doesn't work with the other. So what I say is to try to get to know her, her interests, and what she dislo- <sighs> Are you alright? Sorry for asking about such a boring subject. My kids aren't boring subjects. No, no, I just didn't sleep well today, admittedly. Are you worried about Megan that much? No. No, I'm not. <laughs> something like that. Before I could explain the situation, I felt something pulling on my arm. Is he my kid? Is he okay? A Aiden, are you tired already? God. I don't know, Mom. I'm hungry, I think. God, he looks sick. His eyes look distant. How was he hungry again already? Didn't he just have breakfast? What happened to the kid? Can you order something for us to eat? Sure, just give me a minute. Mommy, please, I'm starving. Okay, sweetie, I'll ask them to bring us a slice of pie. I gave Janice an awkward smile, not wanting her to think I wasn't taking care of my son. Although it brings to question why he was acting so strange all of a sudden. Never embarrassed me like that before. Embarrassed? After a couple of minutes, the waitress brought the pie as I asked her to. Aiden grabbed it from her hands and started to munch on it in a fast, fast and instant it was gone. But the expression didn't change, he was still hungry. Is this what they call a growth spurt? <laughs> Is he always like that? I wonder if he has that thing where he's always hungry. No, not really. Aiden, is everything alright? Do you want me to take you home? Mm. Aiden? It made me recall that dream I had last night. Was it my fault that he was getting sick? Did I not protect him enough? M Mom. Janice and Evelyn were staring at me, waiting for me to say something. I had to take action. We'll be leaving then. Ah, uh, the bill. I should. It's fine. I'll handle it. I hope Aiden feels better soon. I took him by the hand and guided him out. Once we arrived home, he was burning up and kept asking for food. Something was very wrong. I sat there by his side as the hours passed and kept looking after him, panicking. I wouldn't want to end up like... Uh, should we take him to a doctor? Mom? Weren't you at school? Did Dad bring you home? What happened? We were out with Janice, then suddenly he started feeling ill. His fever has stopped, so 
I believe he'll feel better soon. Well, if it gets worse, let me know so I can drive him to the hospital. It wouldn't be surprising if he had the same condition Dorian had years ago. Condition, huh? It's not that. It's different, really. How would you know? Just a hunch. Their symptoms are different anyway. What were his symptoms? <sighs> Let's hope that you're right. Come on, Dorian. Let's leave them alone for a bit. Okay. I waited for Aiden to fall asleep. Once he was in a deep sleep, it was time for me to leave the room. Looking after him all day took my energy away. I haven't eaten or drank anything since this morning, so I want to allow myself to take a short break. When I was walking through the corridor, I heard Dorian call me while he was peeking through the door. You okay, kiddo? Mom, do you have a minute? I couldn't help but imagine that something bad had happened again, but I decided to give him the benefit of the doubt. Of course. Hey, of course. What is it? So, my play is tomorrow at 7pm. Do you remember where you left my costume? Oh, true. I had stitched it yesterday. No, I'm pretty sure I left it in my room. I can go get it for you. No, that's fine. You don't have to. What? Yeah, go get his costume. I could see what it was about. Dorian was worried about me, but he didn't know how to express it. Aww. Dorian, I'll be fine. It was just a scare. Your brother is getting better, and with that, I'll get better too. Right. I just... I feel guilty somehow for adding up all the stress. Sorry if it was my fault. Oh, well, honey, you didn't do anything wrong. I mean, the fight at the school, but... It's not, but you are forgiven. I just thought about how I got Megan hurt for being reckless. Sure, Aiden told me to do it, but I should have been old enough to realize I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, but I mean, you're a kid. I'm glad to see you coming around. I'm proud of you. What I mean with that is, I would like you to be there for me tomorrow. Dad has been acting weird lately, and I feel like nowadays all that matters to him is work. I know at least I think that you care, so it'd be nice if you could come. Well, oh, God. I want to go to your play. And I hope they're not going to make me choose between my kids. No! <laughs> oh my God, can't I just take them to a doctor? And... I mean, ugh, fuck. He's so young, too. Ugh, I feel bad. I, mean, I do have to take care of my kid, but I don't want my other kid to feel like I'm a- is that a gun? The wall? Those are some interesting images. We got Goku, Godzilla eating a building, a spaceship, and a bear holding a gun. It's fire truck. <gasps> hey! Look at that! It's Rena from, <laughs> from Higurashi! These people have some good taste in horror. The teddy bear in the fort. Alright! Alright! I like this! Ugh, I'm sorry, kid. I, w I really do want to go to your play. I wish there was a, a way around this. I'm so sorry. I have to be there for Aiden. I'm sorry. He's still not 100%, so I don't feel comfortable leaving him with your dad. Plus, it would be embarrassing if I had not been seen as the best mother I could be. What? Fuck that! Screw images right now. This is about your kids. I'm sorry, kid. He looked down, clearly upset. I was expecting him to say something snarky or walk away, but he lifted his head and looked at me. I'm sorry. I want to go. It's okay. I understand. Well, if it works, you'll get to see me in other plays in the future. You're a good kid. Are you enjoying acting that much? Kinda. It's nice, I guess. <laughs> He put on a smile for me. I wish I could witness his acting skills in action, but that would be for another time. Aww. I'll go fetch your costume then. Good luck tomorrow. At least get a recording, ask one of the parents to record it. Thanks, Mom. And then you guys can watch it together? No problem. And then you get, like, the best of both worlds. I turned around and continued on my way to the kitchen. I felt bad for making that choice, but I couldn't be around for both of them. I just can't. Oh, God. Really? There has to be something we can do.
I looked up, certain I was being watched, but this time there were no shadows in the kitchen. There was no shadow in the kitchen. I should rest, or else I might have those nightmares again. I had a deep sleep this time. I couldn't remember any nightmare, but when I woke up, there was a sense of dread. I was sweating bullets and I had a big headache accompanied by a stiff neck. Victor, are you there? Yes, did you sleep well? Uh, not really, I... I held my neck in hopes of making the pain go away, but it just wouldn't stop. I still don't know to pronounce your name. He stepped closer and took my hand out of the way. I couldn't see what was there, but whatever it was made him speechless. What is it? Uh, uh, Victor. Wait, I, I want you to look at your neck as well. Why was he so frightened all of a sudden? I decided to follow his plan and look at him as well. Ugh. So, it's there too. What is that, a bite? It looks like it. You never noticed it before, right? No, it, it wasn't there before. I would have seen it. Did it appear when, when we were asleep? Maybe. I don't know. I've never seen something like this before. Could it be... Could it be what? The monster. The, the one I thought was just a nightmare. A monster? He looked away, skeptical, but I was certain. As hard as it was to believe, it had to be. I was never one to believe in supernatural creatures, but maybe it could explain why Aiden was acting strange as well. Hungry? Maybe it's leeching life force? But we haven't been hungry. What should we do? Call a priest? A I'm perplexed, that's... that's all. What about Dorian's play? Or about Aiden's condition? I don't know. Okay, mm. If we're out of the house, they can't reach us, right? It's just an assumption, but it's best... It's the best we can do right now. Alright, I'll take Aiden to the hospital then. Here's my number, one priority right now. Uh, you go to work and then to Dorian's play. He's my number one priority now. Sounds like a plan. Just take care, please. What should we tell them? Nothing for now. It would ruin Dorian's focus on his play, and it would risk Aiden getting even sicker. And tell Dorian I'm sorry. Okay, I understand where you're coming from. And that's exactly what we did. I drove Aiden to the hospital, and as expected, they decided to keep him there for observation. They allowed me to stay there in the room. Mm. Oh, you're awake. Where are we? At a hospital room. They still need to run some exams, but hopefully you'll be out soon. What kind of exams? I'm perfectly fine. I swear. Furthermore, I stand up and reach for his forehead, but he turns his face to the side. Let's go home. I don't feel good here. It's scary. I'm right here with you, kiddo. You'll be okay. Oh, we can't just yet, honey. The doctor, she... Please. He never spoke to me like that. He never dared to raise his voice. I was so taken aback that I couldn't help but distance myself from him. No. Did I scare you? I'm sorry, Mother. I, I just really can't be here. And why is that? It was just the two of us in the room, but I could swear it had gotten colder. Aiden's expression went flat as he sighed heavily. Because here is where I died. Fuck! What are you talking about? Well, technically, it was your Aiden that passed away in this hospital. After what he said, a little kid in front of me transformed into a monster. A little kid. Oh. 
I could spot his chest bulge through the thin, dark blue skin, blue saliva dripping down on the side of his mouth while he stared at me. Those eyes were the same as the one that had been following me through the past few days. I only knew it was my son because the monster kept his grip on the old teddy bear. Uh, Aiden, what, what happened? I told you, Aiden's gone. The roar was deafening, as if it had been bubbling up for eternity. You knew I was fake from the start. Aiden was sick just like Dorian, but when I came, I was healthy and you wanted that. I... I didn't. You always wanted a perfect family more than anything, so much that you let me take his place. You've been keeping me alive until now, and for that I am grateful, but as I grow older I... need more. More? I gave you everything. What else could I do for you? He's still my son, he has to be, or else it would mean that I don't have Aiden with me anymore. That I cannot accept. My priorities, okay? You can only protect me now, Mom. And how can I do it? Make me your priority. What about my husband and my other kid? If that's what he wanted from me, then that's what he would have. The duty of a mother is to keep their child safe, loved, and well-fed. And I would never want to be thought of as a bad mother. I stepped closer, allowing him to hug me, digging his teeth against the back of my neck. No, it was him. My senses slowly started to go numb. I knew it was my time to go. Dory and Victor, they had one another. They'd be okay. As for me, I will have to fulfill my duty for my little angel. Bad end. Okay, let's um, let's hop back in real quick and see if we can maybe prioritize our other kid and maybe get a different ending. This game has two endings. I still want to sew his costume. I'm going to really focus on him. I don't think the book club meeting really means that much. I don't think this matters either. Zucchini muffin. Set a timer. Oh, we set a timer that time. Did we set a timer last time? Let's see, we're still going to school because I really only care about my kids. And if this leads to the same ending, then I guess we'll, we'll try to peek at the book club, but I really don't care about the book club. Okay, so we're gonna go and talk to him. It was time to check on Dorian and see what he had to say about today's incident. It's open. I walked in and stood there with my arms crossed. He wasn't looking at me, but I could see a bitter expression on his face. Hey, son. I'm sorry, Mom. Why do you keep getting involved with those kids? I told you already, they aren't your friends. They are. They like to have me around, and they're fun, usually. And besides, you always tell me how you used to be a wallflower in school. I don't want to be a loner. It isn't fair to compare our childhoods. It was a different time and we were different people. Plus, I've changed a lot too since then. I have your father, you, and Aiden, who are always so well behaved. Sorry it's not fair to compare you two. I know you're a, a good kid at heart. I'm just worried about what other people would think with you always getting into fights. Why are you so concerned about what other people think? <sighs> I'm sorry too. It's just, when I try to fix things with you, it always seems like we drift apart. It'd be easier if Dad came to talk to me. He would understand. Aww. You had your chance, but you chose the silent treatment with him. Though, if you insist, I'll tell him to come by. But remember, I'll always be your mom, no matter how much we seem to drift apart. You can open up to me. I'll listen. I'll think about it. Thanks for coming anyway. I turned around to leave the room. Don't forget to close the door. Sure. By the way, I'll ask your dad to bring the pizza to your room when it arrives. See you later. Close the door and headed downstairs. Okay, so this time we're gonna confront the youngest kid. 
Aiden, what did you do? It, it was Dorian. He, he came running downstairs and stumbled. He... Oh no, he was about to cry. It's okay, deep breaths. He's lying, he told me to do that, I swear. What exactly did he tell you to do? He dared me to surf downstairs with our pillow. I didn't know your friend could be standing right- Your friend would be standing right next to the stairs. It's alright, I'll take her to the hospital, it doesn't seem too bad. Just be careful next time, kids. He's the one lying, hick. Shut up. Both of you, go to your room. Megan, I'm so sorry. If there's anything I can do, just let me know. Boys ran upstairs with sad faces. There wasn't much I could do to please them. I should be focusing on Megan. Really? I... Whatever. Let's just get out of here. Janice took Megan into her car, and the other guests took the cue to leave us as well. I was shocked. It had to be an accident, right? Just what's going on today. What a disaster. Oh, so this is different. So, um... Let's see. So we had... Has once hit the sack. Been extremely exhausted from work. Still feeling good. He goes to sleep. And then I start hearing crying. Where could this be coming from? But this time, I'm checking on the oldest son. I'm willing to bet that who I check on right after school is who I'll be seeing, so this is different. Honey, how is he feeling? He, he isn't breathing. We have to call an ambulance. I'm on my way. Make sure he's safe, okay? In the blink of an eye, the scene changed. We were now at what seems to be a hospital. It was very strange. The smell was very familiar to me, yet the vision was blurred. I couldn't see straight. We don't know his condition yet, but I promise we are doing our best to figure it out and find a cure. Oh god. I'm just so tired of being scared of losing my son. It, it'll be alright. We just have to trust the doctors and pray hard enough for him to be- for him to recover soon. As the words exited my mouth, the room suddenly went pitch black. After a minute or so in pure darkness, Dorian is seen, is seen in front of me. His skin was white as snow, and his eyes were like two black holes. Son! Everything comes with a price. Oh god. Is it not, is it not my other kid? Are both kids the, the demon-sucking monster? Clench my heart tight. God, why did it feel so real? Are they really okay? I have to check on them. Let's see, I rushed to the rooms to find them safe and sound asleep. Thankfully, it was really a dream, but it did not look good towards my anxiety. A glass of water calmed down. Embarrassing as it was, maybe I should call my therapist. Call your fucking therapist. Downstairs, sips of water. Still, freaky ass monster. Glowing eyes, sense of dread. Hours, go to room to cry. It seems a lot more sinister reading it again, knowing that he's essentially feeding off of his parents. School. Love. Still meeting with Janice. Still meeting that other girl. Still texting while driving. Aiden's hungry. I think I'll probably end up with the same ending. I, maybe you should prioritize the book club? But it just feels bad. That can't be right, right? I really think I should be putting my family first before some people that I don't know. Okay, left doctor on. Walked through the door. Still called my other kid. I play. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna get the same ending. The only thing I have, really have to do is just prioritize my book club then, but that can't be right. Sicated. I'm mad at you. Fuck. <gasps> oh, look at this. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on. He's, 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 okay. So, this conversation's the same. Aiden told me to do it. 
so proud of you. Okay. What I mean is, I would like you to be there for me tomorrow. Dad has been acting weird lately, and I feel like nowadays all that matters to him is work. I know, at least I think that you care, so it'd be nice if you could come, Mom. I'll ask your dad to watch over Aiden then. I'll ask your dad to stay with your brother. I've been so busy with Aiden and the book club recently, but it'd be nice to spend more time with you. Aww. You have no idea how much this means to me, Mom. I know I've been causing problems, but I want to make you proud. <laughs> and you do, no matter what. I'm always proud of you. I hugged my son for the first time in a while. He hugged me back tightly. It was nice bonding for a moment, and honestly, it felt like, for a second, my mind had been lifted from its haze. When did I start caring so much about looking like a good mother instead of actually being a good mother? Victor spotted us from downstairs. I let go of Dorian and talked to him. Go get some rest. I'll take care of Aiden while you sleep. Thank you for taking care of him. I got more experience after last year last time. I turned around into the bedroom, turning off the light. Just when I was about to close the door, I saw those eyes again. Oh, God! Ew! Why are you in my room? Aiden, get out! They were, in f they were on the roof, staring at me firmly with either anger or disappointment. I could not tell. Honey, bunny, listen. You can't be killing your parents. We can still take care of you, but we're gonna have to like buy some pet cows or something if you leak blood off of. It doesn't have to be your parents. You're gonna kill us. Have you seen those bite marks, man? They look nasty. Probably infected or something. I didn't move, and the monster was staring at me. And the monster that was staring at me went for the attack. <sighs> those are some teeth. I turned on the lights as fast as I could, but when I did, it was they were already gone. The window from the room was open, so that must have been its escape route. I closed the window, opened the door, and left the lights on before I went to sleep. Hopefully Victor was protecting the boys, so I could be at peace in case the monster came back. I had a deep sleep this time. I couldn't remember any nightmares, but when I woke up, there was a sense of dread. I was sweating and had a big headache accompanied by a stiff nap. Victor, are you there? Yes, did you sleep well? I want you to look at my neck as well. Oh god, it looks so bad. How did you how did you hide that from me? How did I not notice this horrible ugly bruising and these fucked up teeth marks on the back of your goddamn neck? Ew. And then why on the neck? It'd be like on the butt or something, a little less painful. It's a lot of stuff that goes on in the neck. You can't just be biting it, fuck up and nip the jugular or I don't know how those teeth look big, fuck up and sever my spinal column. I mean, come on. Okay, you can take Aiden to the hospital. I'll take Dory into his play. I promised him after all. Be careful. He kissed me goodbye while he headed to Aiden's room. I went to grab Dorian, and while I was on my way to the car, I could hear Aiden cry loudly. Are you sure you want to leave him? He's with your dad. He'll be fine. I held back some tears. I would have to trust that Victor would do his best to keep Aiden safe. Mom, it's okay. You can't put the world on your shoulders. You're right. I can't worry about everything. Today is about you, so go and break a leg. Alright, I'll do my best. I drove him to class and waited for his play to start. I stopped by the mall. Dorian has, was to be improv and the least I could do was encourage him to keep on the right path. The time I spent in the shop was a bit therapeutic. I grabbed a box of chocolates to give him after his play. Aww. It made me wonder if Victor and I were overreacting, but, but we could think of something else when we meet again. Once time came, I left the building and headed straight to Dorian School. I found a way into the theater where all the other parents were gathered. Through the curtains, I could see Dorian peeking out. 
He looked nervous, but it seemed that my presence somewhat comforted him. It's always great. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever been in it, but when you're on stage and you're performing and then to see your parents or your siblings like out there, it's, it's so amazing. <laughs> Rant over. You can do it. I met her just before he was called back and the lights were off. It was time for the show to start. It seemed like the play starred Megan's son as the main lead, with him featuring in every scene of a rather lengthy play. By comparison, Dorian only appeared in a few scenes in an insignificant extra character. Yet although he had only one voice line, <laughs> and his acting was a bit wooden, I could see that he was giving it his best, trying to stay in character. Soon enough, the play ended and the curtains fell. As the lights came back on, the audience began to leave. Dorian approached me bashfully, still in costume. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't able to get a bigger part. No, honey bunny, you did great. It must have been embarrassing watching me in such a minor role, especially when I knew some of the other kids of the moms in your book club were starring. No, fuck them. It's about you, honey bunny. I didn't come to watch their kids. I came to watch you. Whatever role you're in, you could have been a tree and I would have been just as proud. <laughs> Don't worry. That doesn't really matter to me. What's well, important is that I saw you were giving it your all. I'm very proud of you for that. Oh, and I got you some chocolate as congratulations for your first ever play. It's in my purse somewhere. Let me find it. Mm. Oh god. Mm. I looked down, it was a message from Victor. Come home now. Oh no. I looked up and waved towards Dorian hastily. What happened? Do we have to go? Yes, your father texted me. He's already home, so it must have been a fast visit to the hospital. Jeez, yeah, that doesn't sound good. I'll tell the director, and then meet you at the car. It didn't take long for Dorian to come join me in the car. As we approached our home, nothing looked out of the ordinary from the outside, but I had a feeling that once we entered, things wouldn't be pretty. Stay in the co- No, I'm coming. I want to help. Stay close to me, then. Oh, God! I opened the door and the first thing I saw was Victor on the floor, unconscious with an even bigger bruise on the back of his neck. There's so much blood! I'm surprised you managed to stay conscious enough to text me at all. Call the police? Victor! Dad! We approached him in a hurry. Thankfully he was still breathing, but... That brings a question. Was the monster here with him? Where was Aiden? Those questions would swiftly be answered when the monster finally stepped out of the shadows, revealing its grotesque appearance. You came. Stay away. What are you? Mom, what the hell is that? Where's Aiden? I'm right here, brother. Don't you recognize me? So the monster was Aiden after all. I couldn't believe what was in front of my eyes. My baby. Did you do that to your father? I couldn't contain myself. I was too hungry. It's not enough, but I should be able to talk to you. For now. You, you say you're, you're Aiden. What happened to you? Why did you change? Change? I never changed. There's no point in playing charades. Aiden died, don't you remember? Or did you really delude yourself that I'm the real one? Wait, you knew about this? Why was this thing pretending to be Aiden? He was right. I had been shoving the truth into the deep, dark recesses of my mind. I repressed it the best I could, but I should have known better. I should have known that there was no replacement. No way to keep living the beautiful lie I had wanted. You and your brother were sick, Dorian. That night at the hospital, Aiden didn't make it, but when I turned away from the body, there was a new baby there. He looked just like him. He was healthy and perfect. I, I told myself to believe that losing Aiden was just a bad dream. I, I have no idea. I don't know what to say. 
I'm very grateful for everything you did. Believe it or not, I was happy. But I need your energy to survive. My hunger is stronger than my love for the family. It's animalistic. It's my instinct. No need to be nice to food. One is down. Now take the other. He's right. I'm sorry, Mother. Wait. Oh, it was Captain Hook that was speaking. It started to step closer. I could feel its warm breath ready for its next meal. I gotta protect my other kid, though. Can't let anything happen to him. No. Dorian stepped in front of me with his arms open wide. I can't let you do this, kid. I don't care what you want. You tricked us. You don't deserve to call her mom. Despite what I had done, Dorian still wanted to protect me. At that moment, I was not sure if I were more proud of him or ashamed of myself. I had let my insecurities and my grief cloud my judgment, but now my mind was crystal clear. He's right. I won't allow you to destroy this family any further. The monster looked perplexed, as if he wasn't expecting this outcome. Very well. I'll take it by force, then. I pulled Dorian by his arms and ran. The monster chased after us. Can we call, like, the police for my husband? He's bleeding out on the couch. But it seemed like it was not in its full strength yet, so we still had the upper hand. Sprinting into the bedroom, I locked the door behind us. Hopefully it would buy us enough time to come up with a plan. Call the police! Husband is dying! What should we do? Is there anything we can use to defend ourselves with? Well, I guess he thinks our husband is dead, so it'll probably be okay, but I don't know. He's bleeding an awful lot. I don't know. God. We searched every corner of the room, but the best weapon we found was a slightly broken hairbrush. What will happen if he gets you? Will you end up like Dad? Probably. I don't know. I really don't. Don't you love the remix of this song? It, it took a, a cute lullaby and just twisted it into just sheer horror. It's very fitting. <laughs> I'm definitely crying though. No amount of mockingbirds is going to get me out of this situation. No diamond rings are going to help. Blood sucking insect chasing after me. No! <laughs> Startle me. The monster started to slam against the door. And I could hear it creaking and cracking. There was a loud smash. There you are. At each step he took forward, we took two back, but eventually we found ourselves standing with our backs pressed against the window. Dorian, you're gonna have to jump. You're gonna have to jump and call Megan. Call Megan. Maybe she still has that glass jar in her hand. We can use it to, to kill this thing, which is still kind of fucked up, but you know. Call Megan. <laughs> she can help. <laughs> Megan with the glass in her hand. I promise I'll make this quick. You won't suffer. I looked at Dorian and held his hand. If this was going to be my last moment, then I was glad he was by my side. Mom, I love you. The monster launched forward, and that's when Dorian pulled me down and the creature went flying above our heads. Oh, wow, you're smart. I was thinking about just checking out the window and... <laughs> <laughs> it is a good thing I'm not in control. We definitely would have died again. It hit the glass violently, sending shards everywhere, but by some miracle, Dory and I were mostly unscathed. The creature that was once my son lay crumpled on the pavement below, contorted in pain. Oh, there was pavement behind us? I thought there might be like a bush or something. Ooh, my ideas are awful. There was no condition to attack us anymore, but I had one last thing I needed to do. Call the ambulance because my husband is bleeding out on the couch? Running down s <laughs> I guess I'm not checking on him. Can we get my son to call the police? Someone has to get an ambulance because my husband is dying. He's dying. This is why we need cell phones, people. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Running down the stairs and out of the house, I grabbed the monster by its scruff and began to drag it towards the kitchen. Are we going to eat it? It seemed to immediately know my plan, desperately trying to fight its way out, but my grasp was iron with conviction. Are we gonna eat it? Feed its entrails to my dying husband so he can recover his strength? Opening the oven door. We're gonna cook our baby! 
Like, I, I know he was pretending, but I mean, he only started the, the blood sucking thing recently. Maybe he can be rehabilitated. We can get some cows. <laughs> Opening the oven door, Dory and I shove the thing inside. Why are we cooking it? And crank the temperature dial all the way up, ignoring its pleas for mercy. Tears running down my eyes, I began to chant the last rites I'd ever given Aiden. Its screams got louder and louder. So did my own voice until suddenly there was silence. Opening the oven door revealed that all was left was the monster of the monster wars and ashes. We better like either clean that shit out or replace the whole goddamn oven because I am not cooking more zucchini muffins in that oven when we just roasted our once dead animalistic bug thing of a sun in it. And, and ovens, like, you can't cremate stuff in ovens. Have you tried it? You'll just burn the fuck out of it. There was a guy, I think, who tried to cremate his dog, or actually it was probably a lady, who tried to cremate their dog in an oven, and it just burnt the fuck out of it. You know why? Because ovens don't get that hot. You can't get an oven hot enough to cremate something. Now, we could assume that it was a bug thing, and maybe most of it was, like, exoskeleton, and, like, some juices and shit, but come on. Dorian, thank you. I know that Aiden is gone, and you'll miss him, but promise me you won't look back. I need you as well. I want you to be okay, alright? I promise. Thank you for caring for me, even when I wasn't being such a good mother. There was still one thing left to do. We went back to the living room and checked on Victor's condition. Is he good? Thankfully, he was still breathing, so we called an ambulance and they took him to the hospital. After a few days. Hey, honey. Oh, man. How are you feeling? As well as I can be, and I can't believe any of that was true, although I'm glad it's over. You guys have to be grieving like something serious, though. Even knowing your, your son was a monster, that can't be easy. You have my condolences. I wanted to say sorry. I should have said something sooner. I didn't believe in it myself, but that didn't mean I should have left you in the dark. No, it wasn't just you. I was in the wrong as well. Did you know? The truth is that I wanted to believe too, so I just ignored everything and focused on my work instead. That way, I was able to dull myself enough to where I could avoid the truth by never thinking about it as well. Oh, that's why you've been so distant. I thought maybe you might have been, like, hooking up with your secretary or something. But I can see now that I was being selfish, only caring about myself when you needed me. I realized too late that you were hurting as much as I was. Oh. <laughs> Let's take this as a new start. I still love you. I just want to see it closer like it was before. Can you do that for me? Absolutely. I love you as well. Aww. I feel like that's the first real smile we've seen from him. He's always looked so upset before. He still looks tired though. I hope they put some antibacterial on your neck, man. That looks nasty. After he was fully recovered, we talked things through and decided to move to another house. One that wouldn't bring any bad memories. And stop with the fucking book club. You don't need to be putting that kind of pressure on yourself to be this perfect person. No one's perfect. It's hard enough just living day to day, let alone caring so much about what other people think. I went back to therapy. Thank God! I went back to therapy, and as I was slowly finding a way to let go of the past, Dorian decided to devote more of his time into theater. He's going to be a great actor. He's still to become the lead, but with the support of both, but with the support of both Victor and I showing up to every play, He's become a rather <laughs> invaluable part of the supporting cast, if I do say so myself. What had happened could never be undone, but with the help of my family, I know that I was heading in the right direction. Aiden will never be forgotten, but the one thing I learned from that whole situation is that I don't have to appear to be the perfect mother for everyone else. All I needed to be was a good mother for my family. Good end. Wow. <laughs> that was... That was motherly. Those bears definitely took on a whole new meaning after after going through that. Mm. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I think they did a pretty good job. It was a pretty cohesive and interesting story. <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs> I think part of it has me a little shook. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty terrifying prospect to be with your kid, thinking everything was okay, and th 
makes you sad. But, you know, kids, adults, there's no one that's perfect. So demanding that perfection from your child or even yourself isn't healthy. I think it's okay to take a break every once in a while and not have to worry so much about keeping up appearances. Which, by the way, I think they did a really good job of just kind of explaining and showing her mental state and where she was at with how others were perceiving her. It was good. That was good. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> take care.